We begin with President Trump, who's holding a campaign-style rally in Michigan today, but he teased something dramatic could happen when he meets with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The Trump administration hopes that meeting will take place in the coming weeks. Sources tell CBS News Mongolia and Singapore are the two final countries under consideration for the historic summit. Hours before the president spoke, Kim Jong-un uh, crossed that border into South Korea. He was greeted by South Korean President Moon Jae-in. President Trump said after a furious year of missile launches and nuclear testing, good things are happening. Errol Barnett is at the White House. Errol, good morning. Good morning. President Trump said in the past the U.S. has been played like a fiddle when negotiating with North Korea. Now, though, President Trump says Kim Jong-un isn't playing games this time around, and if there is no agreement to be made, he says, he'll just leave the room. This should not have been left for me to handle. President Trump said bringing peace to the Korean peninsula is his responsibility. We will not repeat the mistake of past administrations. Blaming predecessors for failing to halt North Korea's nuclear development. Maximum pressure will continue until denuclearization occurs. The president said he was encouraged by Kim Jong-un's goal of denuclearization and recognized American allies, China, Japan, and Germany for helping with the administration's max pressure efforts. Hours before President Trump's comments, Kim Jong-un shook hands and embraced South Korean President Moon Jae-in. The first time in 65 years a North Korean leader walked south of the border. I also want to uh, congratulate the Republic of Korea and North Korea on their historic meeting. Newly confirmed Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who met with Kim earlier this month, said the U.S. wants North Korea's weapons dismantled. We would not be where we are today without President Trump's maximum pressure campaign. Pompeo was in Brussels for meetings with NATO members just 24 hours after the Senate approved his nomination. The nomination is confirmed. The former CIA director will also travel to Saudi Arabia, Jerusalem and Jordan to discuss the Iran nuclear deal. He is unlikely to stay in that deal. President Trump discussed Iran with the French president and German chancellor, both of whom visited the White House this week to convince Mr. Trump to stay in the agreement. The president declined to say whether military force would be an option if he is unable to negotiate a new arrangement, but made one thing clear. They're not going to be doing nuclear weapons. You can bank on it. Now, next month, President Trump will need to decide on if he will continue to suspend sanctions on Iran. They were initially lifted under the 2015 agreement. And next week, there's another big foreign policy decision for the president, a decision on whether to continue to allow the EU to be exempt from the steel and aluminum tariffs. Michelle? Big decision there. Errol Barnett at the White House. Thank you.